Data, data, data. As markets attempt to anticipate the Federal Reserve's final rate decision of 2023, Chair Powell hinted last week that any decision will ultimately depend on data. The October CPI due tomorrow morning, the first in a heavy slate of U.S. indicators, providing a glimpse into the U.S. economy's performance here and much needed clarity about the state of the Fed's inflation fight. So what does a closer look at October's data thus far tell us about the state of the economy and what can we expect going forward? For all those questions and much more, we've got joining us in studio, Lakshman Achuthan, who is the co-founder of the Economic Cycle Research Institute. Great to have you here in studio Thank with you. us. First and Welcome. foremost, you know, as we think about what is next to come, and even as we've heard more economists from some of the largest banks here in the U.S. spell out what they're looking for in 2024, 2025, as far out as then, <laughs> even we still have the here and now of the yeah. Fed's decision to come at their next meeting. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my gosh, I just laughed. I'm sorry <laughs> uh, when you said 2025, because who knows? Exactly. Right? right. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to know what's happening in the next month, as you say. Um, so looking at the, and, and, and we all are just trying to look at the latest data mm -hmm. and analyze it in some sort of framework to say, um, what, what do I expect? Should I lean this way or lean that way? Um, Does it feel like they're leaning too much into data at this point? That is, that is rear view mirror. That's backwards. Yeah, well, they have to, right? So there's, the, there's a lot of monitoring going on, right? right? So, so there, it's a good point what you're making. That's backward looking coincident data, mm -hmm. a lot of now casting. So you, you can have, I just looked, all these credit cards were swiped, so I know what's happening. Well, actually, you know what just happened, right? And, and to your point. So to do forward looking, you need some sort of framework. And there'll be big econometric models that'll say, well, if you push this, then that should happen. Or if you know, I, I survey you and you say something, maybe you'll actually do it, I don't know. <laughs> all of these things we're trying to figure out. So, from our vantage point, when, when cycles, what we're looking there are just patterns. There's free markets have upswings and downswings. Um, they're messy. They do not act the way you uh, expect them to act. Sometimes they go a lot further because we get really excited and we get really upset. Mm -hmm. And we do both of those things, I mean, we, the collective we. And so um, here we are, I'm, pr I'm pretty darn sure we're in a cyclical slowdown, okay? As best as I could tell, looking at backward data, current, you know, current or forward-looking data, it, it's still continuing. Um, and the Fed, separate from growth, which is slowing, which is what they want, mm -hmm. right, uh, is concerned about inflation, right? So what's going on there? That is also cyclical. Uh, and that is slowing, uh, and the market is saying, okay, we've done it, right? We're, the slowing is good, we're good to go. Uh, it should be kind of clear skies pretty soon once we get over this little valley here. And um, the forward-looking data on inflation is saying, well, directionally, sure, it is slowing, but are you gonna get to where you wanna go quickly? Well, that could take a while, and that's the higher for longer that we've been having this back and forth discussion on. To your question just now, sorry, it was a long answer. Uh, but the, the thing is, is probably still a little more higher for longer. Okay. So higher for longer <laughs> than when we talk about the inflation fight right now, just putting a little bit more of a timetable on this. When we're talking about mm -hmm. if the Fed is able to get it back to their 2% 2 2 target, right. should they still be targeting 2%. Do you think that's fair in this economy, given some of the changes? Yeah, so so they've got to do, they have these mandates, right? Yeah. Jobs, growth, and stable inflation. And and for whether or not the actual number two is a, a real number or whatever it is, uh, the intention is clear to get back down there. Uh, you saw expectations. We surveyed a bunch of people uh, at the end of last week, and they were like, whoa, we see a lot of inflation in front of us, mm -hmm. especially like five to 10 years, which nobody can forecast, but it's more about how are you feeling, and they're feeling that way. Right. That's got to put the Fed on edge. I think rather than letting the base of inflation drift up, mm -hmm. as an institution, their credibility is all around inflation uh, stable, stability, so I think they're going to stick with it, and he's been saying that. They've all been saying we want stability. Can they do that and avoid a recession? Oh. <laughs> You know, it's hard to have your cake and eat it too, right? And it's supply and demand. The one cure for high prices is high prices. We're seeing that. Uh, demand is going down. If you're going to get to 2%, let's just to pick a number. So let's say we're north of three somewhere and you want to cut it in half. Um, there's going to have to be some come down in demand growth. And 
you know, it's hard to have your cake and eat it too. So the risk there is still, I think, of generally to the downside, um, especially globally. You yeah. see the same kind of dilemma in Europe uh, and elsewhere. So there is some general breaks being put on. It'll be very interesting to see, I think, month to month, energy prices came down, so CPI will come down. Right. That'll happen. Yeah. Does, if, and if we do get even a two handle on CPI at mm. some point, because the target is 2%, mm -hmm. getting inflation down to 2% for the Fed, does a two handle alone justify a cut next year? If you had it on a sustained basis, mm -hmm. right? You can't, one data point doesn't really matter. We can't just you, start cheering once yeah, we see that Yeah, I mean, you will, okay. you will, we will. <laughs> That's our nature, we're gonna do that. We will cheer if we see a two handle. But the question for the policymakers will be like, hey, is this sustained? Um, are we there? And um, uh, that could take a bit longer. I'll give you a cyclical insight, which I think not a lot of people know, uh, is that the trough in inflation Inflation has a cycle. The trough in inflation actually occurs after a recession is over, hmm. not before and not inside of it. And all these things have lags. And so um, if we knew for darn sure that we were gonna be at like 2% in, I don't know, the middle of next year or something like that, the odds are we had some more slowing than was expected. Well, we will see how all this plays out. Lakshman, you got to uh, come and join us again very, very soon here as we head into what sounds like it's going to be a pretty uncertain time. Well, uncertain time, but I would also say uh, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You, know, you know, hard landing and whatever, it's not the end of the world. We've survived 48 of them since 1790, yeah. and we will survive the next one. Just got to hold on to when we start seeing that uptick yeah, again. All right, exactly. Lakshman, always great to have you. Thanks Thank so much you. for stopping by with us.